Many homeowners do what they can to keep their lawns uniform throughout the year. Still, when temperatures drop and the grass becomes dormant, weeds like wild garlic will continue activity, creating uneven patches of growth. Wild garlic can spread and overtake your lawn if left untreated, outcompeting the native turf grass. In this video, we'll go over how to identify wild garlic weeds, how to get rid of them, and how to prevent them from growing back. To shop for the products featured in this video and to learn more about lawn care, click the links in the video's description and get free shipping on your order. The first thing you should do in any pest control plan is identify what exactly you're dealing with. Careless identification can lead to wrong treatment methods, costing you time and money. The term wild garlic can refer to many plants in the Allium genus. However, for the purpose of this video, we'll talk about the weed that commonly grows throughout the US, Allium vineali. Wild garlic is a perennial, grass-like plant that grows from bulbs. They grow actively in the cooler weather of fall and spring and can grow up to three feet tall. When dug up, you can find small garlic bulbs with thin roots. During the fall, the plant will sprout and emerge from the ground. By late winter to early spring, visible clumps resembling grass will have formed. The leaves of these plants are tube-like and hollow when cut open. By mid-spring, the plants will have grown in height. The leaves often grow in twists or curly shapes. By late spring and summer, aerial bulbs will form and burst with bulblets. These bulblets may or may not also be accompanied by purple or green flowers, and they will eventually sprout green tails before falling to the ground to grow new plants. Several plants are easily confused for wild garlic, like wild onion. It's important to distinguish wild garlic from other weeds, as that may impact your approach to treatment. To tell wild garlic from wild onion, check out the leaves. Wild garlic grows tube-like leaves that are hollow inside, while wild onion grows flat, solid leaves. You can also dig up and check out the bulbs. A wild onion bulb is covered in a fibrous membrane, and a wild garlic bulb lacks this. If it's late in the plant's growing cycle, be aware that wild garlic develops an aerial bulb, which bursts into purple bulblets, while wild onions produce umbels of pink or white flowers that eventually become bulblets. Even though wild garlic is closely related to the cultivated garlic we buy in grocery stores, unless you're a trained foraging professional, we advise you not to dig up wild garlic for consumption. Inspection is the next phase of any good pest control plan. Once you know what to look for, check around your property to confirm the weed's presence or find activity hotspots. Wild garlic has a wide distribution throughout the United States. If you suspect weed activity in your lawn, look for patches of differently colored turf. These plants are often a different shade of green from your normal turf grass. Wild garlic grows actively in cooler temperatures when many turf grasses become dormant. When the weather cools in fall, be on the lookout for taller patches of grass that have not lost their color to dormancy. In spring, look out for curly, grass-like plants and early bulb formation. If bulblets have formed, control methods may only treat the existing plants and not any new plants that have yet to sprout. After identifying your weed and inspecting your property, it's time to start treatment. Before starting any treatment, be sure to wear your personal protective equipment or PPE, and remember to keep people and pets out of the treated areas until products dry completely. If you have a few wild garlic plants growing on your lawn, then manual pulling is manageable enough. Keep in mind that it's easy for the plant leaves to break off from the bulb and that other bulbs are often left in the ground to grow. In lawns, mowing will also help, but not kill the plants entirely. With proper, consistent lawn care, weeds will eventually weaken and choke out. For large infestations of wild garlic weeds, the best method of control is to apply a post-emergent herbicide that's not labeled to injure your lawn's native turf grass. In cool season grasses, we recommend 2,4-Diamine. The labeled application rate for this product is 3.16 pints of concentrate per one acre. For smaller applications, this breaks down to 1.1 fluid ounces of concentrate applied over 1,000 square feet. In warm season grasses, we recommend Fahrenheit herbicide. For spot applications, mix 0.2 ounces of product per one gallon of water to apply over 1,000 square feet. Keep in mind that when making applications over St. Augustine grass, Bermuda grass, or Zoysia grass, temporary stunting or chlorosis may occur. For either of these products, we recommend you mix and apply your herbicide with a handheld pump sprayer. Because wild garlic leaves are waxy, we also recommend you use a surfactant like Nanotech to enhance the effectiveness of your treatment. Nanotech is a non-herbicide product designed to improve the adhesion and penetration of pesticides onto treated surfaces. When using Nanotech, just add one fluid ounce per one gallon of solution. 
Spot treat any wild garlic plant you've found during your inspection. Use a fan or cone spray pattern to ensure the leaves are fully coated and spray the weed to the point of wet but not runoff. Be sure to spray on calm days when temperatures are not too hot and when wind speeds are low to minimize drift. When applied properly, affected weeds will yellow and begin to die. A follow-up application may be necessary if signs of recovery are observed, especially if the plant's bulb is still alive. Reapplication intervals with 2,4-diamine range from 21 to 30 days. Reapplication intervals with Fahrenheit range from 4 to 6 weeks. Applications are most effective when plants are actively growing before seed production. If the plants are close to producing seeds, you may need to mow the plant to prevent the weed from spreading. If you do mow, the bulb will survive and grow a new plant over the next year, providing another opportunity to apply chemical control. Keep in mind that mechanical removal alone is not recommended, as it is easy to leave bulbs in the soil to grow new plants next season. Prevention is essential to keeping weeds in check. Even after applying herbicides, the best way to stop weed activity is to ensure it can't happen. One of the best ways to control wild garlic after it's been eliminated from your property is to mow it down if new plants start to sprout. When mowing lawns, simply mow regularly to the grass's proper mowing height. Removing weeds before they can reproduce will stop them from spreading onto your property. We also recommend promoting the health of your turf to reduce the conducive conditions that allow weeds and disease to take hold. Reduce the shade cast on your lawn by trimming overgrown shrubbery and tree branches, rake away leaf litter and pick up any debris, and employ a proper watering schedule to provide the local grass with enough water to strengthen its roots, but not so much that will encourage weeds. Many grasses require one inch of water every week. Apply the water all at once in the morning so it has time to seep into the ground without evaporating in the sun. With these professional products and tips from Solutions Pest and Lawn, you can stop weeds like wild garlic from taking over your turf, and we offer fast, free shipping to help you get control quickly. Visit our website to get your products today. If you like this how-to guide, please share. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe for more how-to and product videos, and contact us for more tips, tricks, and DIY pest solutions.